This week's Parsha contains one of the most famous concepts in the entire Torah, the mitzvah of Hashavat Aveda, of returning lost items. And the Torah teaches us, Lo tirad shor achicha o et seyo nidachim, that you shouldn't see your brother's ox or his sheep driven away, vit alamta mehem, and hide yourself from them. Rather, the Torah tells us, hashev to shivem la'achicha, you should surely bring them back to your brother. And as the Mishnah, and as the Gemara and Bava Metziah teaches us, there's actually a biblical obligation to make sure that we can return the lost items to its proper owners, assuming, that is, that we can identify them through some siman, some sign on the object, as well as assuming that the owner has yet to actually give up hope of ever retrieving the lost object. But what's most fascinating is that this very same idea can be found all the way back in Parshat Mishpatim. The Pasuk over there teaches, Ki shor oivecha o ta'ed, that if you find your enemy's ox or donkey going astray, hashev to shivenu lo, that you must bring them back to him. And while the law is actually seemingly the same, that one needs to return lost property to its owner, the difference in the language of the Pasuk in the verse is stark. Why is it that in our Parsha, that the Torah chooses to describe the ox as being lost, that this ox actually belonged to Achicha, to your brother, somebody who you're obviously close to? On the other hand, in Parsha Mishpatim, the ox is described as being the ox of your enemy. Why does the Torah suddenly change the language in our Parsha? After all, if you have to return the ox of your enemy, then certainly you must return the ox of your brother or your friend. And so what is it that our Parsha and our Pasuk is adding? And so the Ramban Nachmanides, he offers a beautiful insight. He explains that both verses are actually describing the exact same case. You see, in both verses, the owner of the ox is not your friend. In fact, the owner is actually maybe your enemy. He's someone that you don't really get along with. And yet the Torah here in our Parsha uses the description of Achicha, uses the description of your brother to tell us that when there is somebody who is in need, it's a time to put aside our differences and to treat everybody like family. It doesn't matter that he may be your enemy. When it comes to helping him, when it comes to making sure they have what they need, they have to become like family. And I've been thinking about this idea a lot this week as we have really started to gear up for the high holidays, a time when so many of us come together as a family. And it's this idea that makes a community, and by the way, in particular, our community, so magnificent. We're a family. When you have hundreds of members in a shul, all with different backgrounds, observance levels, political affiliations, and so much more, it's impossible to be actually friends with everyone. But yet, when it comes to taking care of the needs of others, even those so different than ourselves... We treat them like family. When we think about what our shul should do, what programs, for example, we should offer, we don't think exclusively about what is good for me or my friends, but we think about what are the needs of others. When someone is in need in our congregation, when they need support, we don't stand on ceremony. We help them. We give them whatever we can, however we can, and whatever it is they might need. That's what makes our community great. And frankly, it's what makes our shul so special. I want to conclude with just one other brief thought. Rav Moshe Alshech asks on our Pasuk, he asks on our verse, why does the Torah use the negative language of lo tira, you shouldn't see your friend's ox, instead of saying it more positively, which is ki tira, that when you see your friend's ox become lost, that you need to return it to him. And so the al Sheikh explains that our Parsha is teaching us that chesed and helping others should never be a question. It should be a part of our very nature that we should make sure that it never happens to be in a situation like that. Lo tucha lit alem, it's not a commandment. Rather, it's a state of being. We're not capable of turning aside. It should be second nature to each and every one of us to help others. And what an incredibly important lesson for each and every one of us as we are now weeks away from the high holidays. How can we expect God to not turn away from us? How can we expect God to do chesed for us if we're not ready to do it for others? 
And so as we begin to make our preparations for the high holidays in the coming weeks, let us actively search out and find these opportunities for chesed and for helping others. Let no one from our family at Baron Hirsch be lost during these times. After all, these high holidays are going to be challenging in different ways for all of us. And so let us think of each other's needs during these coming weeks. Let us support each other. And most importantly, let us treat each other like family. And so from my family to all of yours, really our extended family, we wish you a Shabbat Shalom, a peaceful and a restful Shabbat.